and I'll just make two points and then if you have some questions, we can talk. How many of you have used a phone? I have my phone over there. Oh, you have a phone. <laughs> okay. Yes, I have a phone. Okay. That's a phone. So I now. Have, but the, I had a phone, but my daddy put it away. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so, but you know what a phone is. Thank you. Yes, Isn't it? I got an iPad. Oh, really? You have an iPad? Yeah, Excellent. I have a phone and an iPad. Okay, good. So now, you know, in a phone, you need to charge the phone. You know that? When you charge it, what happens? It has, it has power, then you can use it. And normally, the phone gets discharged if you keep using it. Hmm? But sometimes, even if we are not using the phone, the phone gets discharged. What happens is, there are some programs in the phone, some applications, they start taking energy. And they start taking energy. And then, even if you have a fully charged phone in the morning, and 3-4 hours later, it's gone charge is gone completely so like that for all of us there can be we all have energy you have intelligence you have enthusiasm you can do many things but inside us there are emotions anger can come up fear can come up loneliness can come up and then that takes away our energy it takes away our energy so much that we just don't feel like doing anything. So, if you consider, say, somebody, uh, actually, I was in California. Do you know where is California? Yeah, it's in the USA. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, so, I was in California. I was at one uh, devotee's house, one friend's house, and he was sitting, and there's a big window, and there's beautiful forest greenery behind. And as we were chatting, suddenly, I saw a big ape charging toward the window. Like, you know the planet of the apes? Something like that. So, I think a big ape was charging toward the window and then it raised its fist. Bang! It was about to bang. I got alarmed. And then I looked at my friend and he was grinning. Says, Why is he grinning? Then I looked at him carefully and he had something in his hand something like this then he pressed a button and the ape disappeared I said what was that so what he had done what was that yes actually it was a window but that window had been designed in such a way yeah. that window can also work as a TV screen, TV screen. how do you know that's clever. <laughs> so what happened is, now he knew that there is no ape over there. So he was just grinning. But I didn't know. I thought it was a real ape there. And I was a little concerned, alarmed. So for all of us, our mind is like that screen. No? Have any of you felt afraid any time? <laughs> Isn't it? I'm still scared, isn't it? So now what happens when we thank you? When we feel scared, what happens is that the, sometimes there may be some danger, sometimes there may not be any danger also. But our mind, which is meant to be like a window, which shows us what is happening over outside. It becomes like a TV. And it starts showing a movie over there. This may go wrong, that may go wrong, that may go wrong, that may go wrong. I was in America, I was in a conference on spirituality and mental health. So there, one of my friends is a, is a suicide counsellor. That means if somebody wants to end their life, they are so frustrated, then they call. They are so depressed and that person speaks to them gently. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> so then, what happened was, this, this friend told me that he got a call from a girl, a teenage girl who had already committed suicide. How can she call? She had, she had committed suicide means she had taken the pills, but then after this, taking the pills, she said, I don't want to die. So then she called. <laughs> she came around, then they brought an ambulance over there. And then they asked her that, 
they, they finally they got the ambulance, they saved her. They asked her, why, why did you want to commit suicide? So she told that what happened, she was in the university and she was a medical college student. And she had been then in medical college, they had four years at that time. So of three and a half years, she had always been the first. And she was brilliant. The last year also is fully likely that she will come first. She was very good. But somehow a thought came in her mind. What if I don't come first? What if I don't come first? Oh, then I'm so famous. Everybody respects me, but then nobody will respect me. Somebody else will be the first. And throughout my university, I was the university, I was the first, but the last year they are first, then they'll become famous. They'll be considered as a university topper, not me. And my life will be ruined. Oh, how can I live such a ruined life? Let me end my life. And just because of that one thought, she started, she actually took the poison pills. And then after she took, after that, after she took it, what am I doing? What did I do? So what happened was, so she is here, the mind is here, the world is here. So in the world, there was no problem. She had her exam, she was well prepared. But on the mind, a movie started. And in that movie, what happened? This may go, this will go wrong, this may go wrong, this may go wrong. It started displaying that. Once it starts displaying that, what happens? We get fear, we get anxiety, we can get a panic attack. So basically, our mind can cause us two main problems. One is anxiety, fear, like you said, scared. And the other is depression. Have any of you felt depressed any time? Really? You felt depressed? Okay. Thank you. So what happens is, when we are, dip when we are fearful, the mind becomes like a movie and starts showing something from the future. This may go wrong, that may go wrong, that may go wrong. And we become fearful. It's like that ape comes over there. There's no ape, but we think the ape is there. And when we go into depression, the mind goes behind. Oh, this went wrong in your life. This, that person spoke a lie to you. You were not able to do this. This didn't work. That didn't work. And we start thinking like that. Then we become very depressed. So what we need to do is, this mind is always there. But when it becomes a movie, we need to become understand it. If it becomes a movie, it will drag us away. So it has to be kept a window so that we can focus. Otherwise, completely carries us away. So what do you do? Now chanting is one activity which we are, many of you said it's diff, it seems a little difficult. I also agree. Everybody finds chanting difficult. But the mind and chanting are very interestingly related. What happens is, the mind is like a screen on which either it's a window or it's a TV. So when when we understand where the mind is like this. Say right now, you're sitting here and suddenly you hear a scream from behind. Everyone turned around, what happened? Isn't it? So that means on the mind screen, right now you're hearing me, but some other sound may come up over there. And then you start looking at that sound. You start paying attention to that sound. And that way we get distracted. So if we understand this mind is very tricky. And if we just make sure, even if we can't, if we can understand when my mind is like a screen and when it has become like a movie, when it has become like a TV, when it is like a window, when it is like a TV, then we won't get worried unnecessarily. We won't get disturbed unnecessarily. And this is where even praying to Krishna helps a lot. Now, where is Krishna present? Do you know? Where? Oh, look, yeah, very good. Somewhere else? Yes? Vrindavan. Excellent. Very good. Anywhere else? Sorry? Everywhere. Very good. That means also somewhere? In the universe. Yes? In your heart. Very good. And how close to you is he? Right there. Even if I hug you, when if somebody comes and hugs you very tightly, hmm, still that person cannot come as close to you as Krishna always is. So Krishna is always there. And if you face trouble, 
if you can just remember krishna if you can pray to krishna this screen starts becoming like a movie it will calm down I'll, so that's the first point i told you is about this model or the screen so one i'll tell one story a real life story and conclude with that or two years ago i had gone to america and when i was in america i went through the security you have gone through security when you come inside the country so when i was going through the security suddenly a big noise came and before i understood what happened there were like seven eight american border security with their guns pointed at me i said what happened they said that actually i had gone through security that time the, the sound didn't come and i was waiting on the other side i usually use a wheelchair so i was waiting and then suddenly that noise came and the guns were pointed at me I said, what happened so you know what is this a crutch so they said we have found an explosive in your crutch we have found not our our security system has given a high explosive alert so then they said what is there inside this crutch said, nothing look it's a crutch i use it for walking he said then they look at it and they said we need to break it no i said if you break it how will i walk this that security person said that's not my problem i said what do you mean i won't be able to walk he says no we have we have to you got was very upset so then i was trying to talk with him make him see sense and then suddenly uh, that person's boss came over there and he asked what's going on here then he explained and the boss looked at me the boss looked at him so okay i'll handle this and he said you you go and this person he was said, so what is there in the security he says nothing is there. i said nothing is there, nothing i traveled across many countries i never had any problem so then he looked at it and he said uh, can we open this so i said yeah you can actually pull it like this and start opening it so he says you can open it if you can open it then there's no need to break it okay then they started opening it now what had happened was initially when all these people they pointed their gun at me and i initially i was like a little annoyed then i became alarmed when he said we'll break your crutches and i like to recite bhagavad gita verses in my mind so at that time i was reciting verse from the bhagavad gita 1861 which says ishvara sarvabhutanam riddeshe arjuna tishtati brahmayan sarvabhutani yantra rudhani mayaya that krishna is present in our heart and he's guiding us always so then as i prayed to this as i prayed like this what happened and krishna i started thinking i have traveled across so many countries so many things could have gone wrong a plane could have crashed so many accidents could have happened but you have guided me always please guide me now also i surrender to you i just thought like that and immediately the second security person came the first person was white quite disagreeable almost nasty but the second was a nice person he said can you open the crutches i said okay then he started opening the crutches and then he said open the crutches then he looked down if then he take this part came out and then he looked down and he put his hand or something inside and took out and something black came out of it he said what is this i said what 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 does it look like it looks like dirt so he took it out i said it's dirt so what had happened i had gone to vrindavan and vrindavan is on the banks of a river you know which is the river uh, yamuna ganga is in varanasi yamuna is in vrindavan is good good so anyway so now yamuna unfortunately right now the river is very polluted so what had happened i had walked on the banks of yamuna and this rubber padding that is there uh, crutch tip it is called so it had got worn out and because it had got worn out so when i was walking there uh, my crutches they went in the soil of uh, in the in the sediment next to vrindavan or next to yamuna and that dirt went inside and when that dirt went inside then afterward they replaced the crutch tip but the dirt remained inside and because yamuna was highly polluted so the dirt had a high metallic content in it and because of that high metallic content they thought the dirt was an explosive so then he took out a little more dirt he said what is this i said it is dirt 
took out a little more and then he gave back crutches to me. He says, no, cleaning your, cleaning your crutches is not my work. It's not my job. I said, okay, I'll do my job. Can I go now? He said, yes, you can go. So, what I realized at that time is that when he was saying we'll have to break my crutches, I had become a little alarmed. And I was thinking, if I break my crutches, I can't even walk, what will I do? And there was no devotee at that place. I had to, to catch another connector and flight, go somewhere. So their devotees would be there. So I was wondering, how will I travel? I was getting a little, a little alarmed. You could say a little scared. But then, this, as this movie was starting, in my way, this may go wrong, that may go wrong. But somehow, I prayed to Krishna. As soon as I prayed to Krishna, what happened? Oh, I'm here. Yes, and then somebody else came up over there. So all of us, Krishna is always there with us. And we will all have difficulties. But if you pray to Krishna, then even if the problem doesn't go away, the mind will not make the problem worse. Sometimes we make our problem worse and that makes things tougher for us. So whatever you can do, you can't do in Krishna Bhakti, that is not as important as just recognizing that Krishna is your friend. Just as all of you are friends here, Krishna is also your friend and Krishna is your best friend. Just relate with him like a person. If you can chant his names, that is good. If you can't chant so much, the important thing is just keep relating with him. Pray to him, talk with him, try to know more about him. And you will find that uh, dangers will come. But Krishna will protect. See, the world can hurt us. But greater than the world's power to hurt is Krishna's power to heal. Okay. So, that's what I want to tell you that you, know, you are young, you are intelligent, all of you are very smart. I can see the way you spoke and answered my questions. So, Krishna is there to help you. Just take his help and march ahead in life. Okay. okay. Any questions? Yes. Do you have any advice for chanting? Okay, for chanting, basically, there is a point of concentration, which is like the sound of the holy name. Mm -hmm. And there is a circle of concentration. That means something related with the holy name. If you like a picture of Krishna, keep that picture of Krishna in front of you. If you like uh, some story about Krishna, mm -hmm. maybe keep that story picture in front of you. Uh, if you like... Uh, uh, kirtan about Krishna mm -hmm. then just hear that Kirtan a little bit and then think that this sweet Kirtan this sweet Lord that is the Lord I am calling out you see the point is here the circle is here so it's very difficult to concentrate on the point but if you can't concentrate on the point that doesn't mean you can't concentrate at all so instead of letting the mind wander everywhere let it go to the circle and that way just look at the picture think of the picture and that way, if you can't keep the mind here, let it be here. And you will find that still chanting will go on well. Okay. You had a question? Haribol. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? Okay. I will answer a question which you have not asked. This is a common question. This is, when do your friends ask you, why do you eat vegetarian food? What do you answer? I answer because if, if, if I, I first I ask them, do you like animals? They're like, I love animals. They're, they're like friendly and nice. I'm like, why do you eat them? Because they, they say they're yummy. I'm like, but wouldn't it be nice if you didn't eat your friends? Then they just like walk away. Walk away, huh? Okay. Oh, that's it. Why do you eat your friends? That's quite pro. <laughs> mm, see, there are two, three ways in which we can share. I call it as prescriptive, normative and descriptive. Prescriptive means like a doctor gives a prescription. Do this, don't do this. So that if you tell, na, it's, it's sometimes people are people are put off by that. You should do this. Why, why do you eat your friends? You should not eat your friends. That people are a little put off. Normative means this is right, this is wrong. This is the norm. Descriptive is that this is what I do and this is why I do. So the, all that you are saying, all that is correct. Just the last point you change it. Is I say, do you like animals? Yes, love them. They are my friends. So then you can say, they are my friends also. And I don't like to eat my friends. Just don't worry. Why do you don't ask them? See what happens when you ask them, it becomes a challenge. It becomes a threat. 
then you then it, it they will feel like you are attacking them so so just say that i don't like to eat my friends oh yeah that makes sense so what you do descriptive descriptive means what i do and why i do it if you present it like this then friends will not they will they will okay they will, okay i understand what you say just because you are doing it doesn't mean they have to take it up but if you explain it logically without threatening them they may also take it up at the time okay good you are saying something you already answered my question oh okay i think you going to my dad's book for like a speech like yeah yeah mm. <laughs> okay another common question comes up when you say that about food na no? they say that you kill that we kill animals you keep kill plants what is the difference yes plants are not living really and, and plants don't have so oh no plants are living but like plants have souls yeah. they grow they, they have souls yes what do you think i mean i for us to survive for any living entity to survive some amount of violence is necessary and being human beings with high intelligence compared to other species we can make that difference between causing less amount of harm to other living entities and thus we reduce the amount of violence caused to other living entities by eating only plants beautiful yes very good so is it yes plants is also killing but you can take it in three different ways first is i said from our perspective that is true and you can a scientific perspective also you can say that the plants nervous system is very underdeveloped so their capacity to experience pain and pleasure both are very limited so what you said that, that our plants are not living oh, no 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 i'm saying no no i'm not now why do we think like that because we can't they they don't experience pain and pleasure the same way like animals do uh, a dog may smile a dog may scream a dog may tremble but plants we don't see like that so much that's why it's easy to think that plants don't have emotions they have but it's very less that's one point that's one point the second point you could say that somebody says no no but they also have life how can you take their life so yes, there is a difference now if you consider they if you are if you told your parents that you know our school is going for a trip so where oh we are going to a, a farm to see the harvest festival right when the what is harvesting does anyone know So like, like picking up the fruits and like yeah speaking of the fruits keeping up the crops that's harvesting yeah. so now you now most people say good you can go and see it's a, it's a joyful mood over there that nature has given its fruits or flowers or grains and we go and pick it but suppose you go and tell your parents we're going for a field trip where to a slaughter house now will any parent allow slaughter house where animals are killed so why not there's a difference between the two we all intuitively understand this difference so you can talk in terms of causing less pain you can also talk in terms of a nervous system and also talk in terms of our common experience that is you know, we understand that the animals don't uh, uh, animals suffer much much more than humans and that's why we uh, want to cause minimum pain So what your answer was right i just give some more points about it any other questions so i yes please okay why don't we eat onion and garlic and mushroom see different foods have different properties you know, you know some people have peanut allergy you know peanut butter allergy you know what is allergy and peanut butter allergy you know yeah like if somebody takes peanut but peanut of they get sick so like so now we may say i take peanut nothing happens to me i take peanut butter nothing happens to me why is that because our body is different their body is different so like that so the peanut butter has subtle properties which may not affect you but they which, but they may not affect me but they may affect you so like that each food has its own properties and when it has its own properties sometimes those properties work favorably and sometimes they work unfavorably so onion garlic what it says that they have such they have properties 
which make our consciousness lesser. That means they they start making us more lazy. They start making us. They start decreasing our response time. So they are in our tradition what is called tamasic. So what you could say is that simply uh, that in our tradition this food is said to make us lazy and lethargic. That's why we avoid this food. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Oh, we also have power. You have the power to ask a question. Five ten minutes. So it's like yes. So we also have power, but it is a degree of power. Just like say now, um, if uh, a judge says um, send this person to jail for three months, what will happen? That person will be sent to jail for three months. If you say send this person to jail for three months. Will that person be sent? No. no. Oh, why? Because there's a diff. Yeah. Everyone has like a different amount of like power, like, like, like yeah, like yeah, but that's true. Like gods and stuff. Yeah. So the yeah, but why is that? There's a different position. <laughs> yeah. The judge's position is different. Your position is different. So like that, there are different people with different levels of position. So God's position is higher than us. The devas' position, the devas' position is also higher. That's why they have more power. So now you have some power. You grow up, you will have more power. So power is temporary, but it changes. So they just have more power than us because they are in a higher position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at school, like all of my friends and other people at school were always like, I don't know, going out with each other and like going to movies and stuff like that, mm. and, like enjoying themselves or whatever. And it's just kind of like. Weird for me because I feel like I'm not allowed to go because of Krishna consciousness, but at the same time, like I want to spend more time with them, but like I don't know, I don't. I just get really confused and confused and kind of pressured to like where to draw the line to like. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah. It is difficult to decide where exactly to draw the line, and I understand the challenge uh, to some extent because I was also in college and I was practicing Krishna consciousness. I was working in a company. Long time ago, but it's a com it's it's a universal challenge. So I say two three things. First is that um, there are different kinds of friends. Mm. Some friends we just hang out with, but we don't really we're not very close to each other. Mm. And like some some people may have like say say I have five five hundred Facebook friends, but actually when they ask for help, nobody is there to help them. So. They say that good friends take you to lunch, and bad friends take your lunch. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> so take your lunch means what? Yeah, I just take it and eat it, isn't it? <laughs> so there are different kinds of friends. So and uh, so what we have to see is that many of the activities which people do together. Okay, which friends do together you know, those activities uh, they may lead to some bonding but it is it is quite superficial it is not very deep now if you want to do it you are you are ultimately your own person and you will grow up and you can always do it mm, as you grow up but the point is that these activities which lead to bonding that bonding is superficial real deep bonding happens when we do something worthwhile together maybe you work on some project together you discuss some subject together gain a better understanding with each other so i would say that there are different situations one is if they are doing activities which are which are really bad say for example they are drinking or they are smoking they are taking drugs so what happens going to movies might seem just harmless but many times if the crowd is not right then from there it just goes down and i was just in i spoke in mit you know what is mit which one is it? Massachusetts. So now Massachusetts in the Institute of Technology in America is one of the biggest in the Ivy League. So there was an Indian boy over there. Nice boy. He had come there for to do study in the MIT. It's like in America, his parents had taken a loan and he had got there. And this was first week. His friends took him for a party. And there, what happened? He had he had never drunk, but he drank. And after drinking, uh, they all had to come back. And all his friends were very drunk. So there was no one to drive their car. So they told him you drive. Now he drove the car, 
But what happened here also drunk. So the car, as they were driving, suddenly a child came in the way and the car hit the child. The child survived, was injured. But what happened? He got all the blame. See, hitting a child while driving is bad. But hitting somebody while, while driving drunk is even worse. And he got caught in the crossfire. And all his friends blamed him. They were not really friends. And then it was such a tragedy. His parents were uh, heartbroken. And he was sent from university back to India. So now I'm not saying this is going to happen to everyone. Not all friends are like that. My point is that simply this, that the activities for bonding. If somebody says that, you know, I'll be your friend only if you come for this party. If not, no. Then that social circle may not be the best for us. The, from there we may be dragged down. So, uh, even if you say no to them sometimes, there are other activities where you can connect with them. And as far as uh, enjoyment is concerned, you know, it's, uh, it, there are some activities that are thought of as enjoyable, but whether they are actually enjoyable or not, it's a question. I mean, there's a little enjoyment in it, but then uh, people often become, they just hang out, but they feel lonely. That's why they get drunk, they get stoned. So what you could do is, in your, the so first thing I said is that the friends who make their friendship conditional to you going there, they are not necessarily your real friends. They may drag you down. Second is that in your friend circle, you try to find out some friends, even one, two, who are relatively like-minded. And now, yes, as devotees, we have some things which we do, some things which we don't do. But it's not that you reject the whole world. You may read some books. You may play some games and actually playing games is healthy. Watching movies is, it's not really very healthy in any sense. So if you can, you can find activities which you can do and which your friend like to do and you can bond over them. And thirdly, okay, we'll play a game now. So who would like to play the game? Okay, one person. One person. Okay, yes, please come up. Please come up. Okay, stand here. Hmm? Play a game. Play a game. <laughs> so, I don't know what to play. See what I mean by this is, thank you. What I, please sit. <laughs> now, what I mean is that, see, if you give complete freedom, it leads to complete paralysis. If I tell him play a game, but I don't tell him any rules of the game. I don't tell him any framework for the game. What will he do? <laughs> Isn't it? As he asks, what game do you want to play to play? What rules are there of the game? So what happens? There are two kinds of freedom. There is freedom for and there is freedom from. So of what, what I mean by that is, say we all, if there are too many options for us, say, uh, then we won't know what to do. If every time you have to send a message on your phone, the phone asks you, what font do you want to use? What font size do you want to use? What color do you want to use? Uh, what background do you want to use? What fill do you want to use? Now, I went in that font specific font uh, settings. There are like 25 settings. Now, each time, if it started asking you for 25 settings, you'll get so tired of making the setting, you'll not send the message only. So for all of us, we need certain things to be set in our life. And then other things can be adjusted. So the rules, even for playing a game, rules actually help us to play the game better. Have any of you played cricket? Yes. Yes, okay. So now suppose a baller is bowling and say it's now the Cricket World Cup is there. So a final match is there, maybe between India and Pakistan or between New Zealand and Australia. And the baller wants to get the batsman out. The baller comes very fast. So the baller is, comes here, the batsman is here. And the baller runs right down the pitch pushes the batsman aside and knocks down the stumps. <laughs> that doesn't count, isn't it? Why? Because even to play a match, play a sport, there have to be rules. So there are no rules, say the batsman hits the bot, ball and the ball goes into there and the wicketkeeper is coming to catch the ball. And the batsman hits the bat and <laughs> hits the wicketkeeper. <laughs> what will happen? You can't play like that. So <laughs> for playing any game, you need rules. So don't see the rules necessarily as restrictive. Now these rules give you a framework for your life. 
and in many ways these rules protect they protect us from some bad things now we may feel that they they uh, deprive deprive us of some good things also but what you could do is if your friends make it conditional that you have to do this otherwise we will not be friends then they may not be your best friends and bond over like minded things and just use your intelligence so what if the same time um, i was just in where was i i was in america i spoke at intel who uh, no at, who is a, i spoke at microsoft who is the founder of microsoft anyone knows bill gates bill gates yeah so you know bill gates he had a he the one of the in that in microsoft only they showed me bill gates he minimizes how much his children use social media why because he says i want them to grow to be thinking people so like when you play video games yeah it's it seems enjoyable and you get absorbed but what he said over there is there is two kinds of intelligence so uh, when we get too much caught in trivial things then we don't grow much so you could see this as rules right now you are following them you are with your parents and as far as your friends instead of reducing all your friends to one group try to make it a separate these are friends who are who are, i have some share, shared interest with them and grow that friendship and we also we are also we also don't have so much time always you cannot have too many friends you just hang out with many people but you don't connect with anyone instead of that have one or two friends connect with them and that friending friendship will be much deeper will be much more fulfilling okay thank you thank you for the question any one last question Okay, you, we'll come to you then. Um, if you want to uh, <coughs> achieve something, how do you achieve it? If you want to achieve something, how do you do it? I think uh, I can give a whole class on it. But broadly, uh, I would say three main things. The first is that we desire, then we envision. Envision means make a plan. How should I do this? Okay, I want to become a. I want to become a doctor. I want to become a lawyer. i want to become a whatever i want to achieve something make a, make a plan for it and then after envi- envision is execute okay what can i do right now if you think about if i give you a watermelon eat it now uh how do i eat it what, what will you do to eat it cut it. cut it so like that when you want to achieve something cut it down into small parts okay i want to do that what can i do right now about it hmm? and just take small small steps forward and then so i call it four form that deep go deep desire envision execute and pray pray means that when you are doing something some things are in your control some things are not in your control so what is not in your control just pray to krishna about it and if you keep doing these four things gradually you will grow and then you can achieve Thank you. Okay, last question. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. This doesn't really apply to everybody, but my like my well, not necessarily my parents, but I think just around me, I just have this like pressure because I'm at the point of time now where I need to start deciding like what I'm going to do at university and like take subjects accordingly and stuff like that. And like I know what I like doing, but like. Every time I like research into it, I like kind of get this almost like like anxiety feeling that like you know like if I chose this like am I going to make enough money like is there enough jobs maybe I should do this but I don't like doing that and there's just like a lot of confusion and kind of stress regarding that. Mm. So I just kind of wanted to know like do you think that you know for like a career kind of profession kind of thing like should we choose something that is actually kind of like likable that you that you actually enjoy doing or should you choose something that's kind of more kind of like more like good money earning okay like likable or lucrative you could say which you can you a lot of money i say sometimes we may have to make a choice between the two but it's not always like that sometimes we may find something which works both ways also so what you could do is that uh, sometimes what we think we like now our mind is very fickle we think you like it now but maybe after 3 months hey, it's not so likable also 
so some so what you could do is write see when uh, uh, and thoughts are inside our head they congest our head this keep going round and round and round now suppose there is a fan over here you know when a fan goes round what happens by that you feel cool isn't it yeah. thought fans go round we feel cool but when our thoughts go round we feel hot we start getting heated so what you can do is get your thoughts out write it down write down your pros write down your cons and consider this like a picture of your mind you have taken and kept out and if some new thought comes in don't immediately think about it but just make a note of it maybe in your phone or in a chat add it over there and every week maybe a lot a half an hour or something like that to look at it once again mm -hmm. and okay this this point is good this point is more important i didn't get enough you know, information about it so by that what you do is you periodically look at your points and then the picture which you have taken of your mind it will become sharper it will become clearer and you decide next 3 months next 6 months i'll do this and after 6 months when you are facing a when you have to look at it all again then you will see that maybe what you had you had felt initially you are feeling the same way now then that will mean that it is not just some passing feeling that you are getting it's a deep deep inspiration you have this is what i want to do hmm? and then when you take it up you will be committed to it or if you find that your that meant that picture has evolved you know i thought of this factor this factor and based on this now i think i should better do this not this you can change your decision also see in life there is no guarantee of right decisions sometimes we make the right decision sometimes we make the decision right decision right means what we make a decision and afterwards we realize oh okay this was not the best decision but then if you have gone through the decision making process properly then you will yourself realize uh, okay wh what was exactly i didn't know this information or this situation changed then you can do course correction so co now as i said in a, in a career course correction is not that easy but this is a principle i'm saying that don't think of it as a life or death situation just make the best decision you can in your life right now and move on and krishna is like the like a gps suppose you are going on a road and the gps tells you turn right yeah. and then you turn left then what does gps do redirect redirects does the gps say you didn't obey me get lost <laughs> <laughs> gps doesn't say that so like that even if we make some wrong decisions krishna can help us back on track in fact one of my friends is a air pilot and he told me that when a plane flies i just came from canada to wellington about two days ago three days four five days ago so now when a plane is flying 90% of the time the plane is off course because of its own speed because of the wind pressure and everything but still it gets to the destination why because the pilot keeps reorienting it so like that even if we take a decision and we find out that we just are off course we can come back on course so don't overthink it but give it due thought and eventually you will find a balance between what is likable and what is lucrative and then you can move forward okay so thank you very much to all of you for sitting patiently and hearing and you know krishna consciousness is a treasure please cherish it and even if you don't feel it uh, right now special but you know these memories which you have of all of you being together growing up this will be very valuable for you in the long run all the best hare krishna hare krishna thank you